Hi everyone and welcome back. So this is the part two of my previous video and here I'm doing some changes and as you can see I have added this uh, SQLize module from Nestia SQLize. I have added all these dependencies. What I execute the command is pnpm add all these dependencies and in the root module I'm initializing the connections and I have two entities right user and the post and I have a database URL which is there in the ENV so I'm specifying it so this is how I'm initializing the database connection and then I have updated my modules user modules will be using SQLize module.4 feature post module will be using SQLize module.4 feature for the post this is for the user and inside the services I will be injecting inject model right so so this, these are the changes, right? Uh, inject model, I need to import this. And then instead of user repository, we will be using user model. User model dot find one, same changes we need to do on our post service. So here inject model. So I think this is a post entity. post entity it should be this one okay and then this is the post model you can say and which is of type post okay and now i can just use post model dot create instead of post repository just replace it with the post model this is delete post model and this is again update okay so i think we have updated all the places we don't need these providers so i will just parse them use a provider and okay database config we may not not need it because at the one time we are just passing the database url so we don't need this sqlize rc or uh, this SQLize config but if you want to run the migrations and all you need it that's the only point because migrations uses this config.ts to understand the your database url and all okay now we can do app module.ts is here main.ts everything is good we can start running this so i can see now our application is up and running so it has initialized all the modules and the base path is API v1 API v1 auth so you can see here all the your API router path API v1 auth sign up API v1 post API v1 auth login API v1 auth sign up the only remaining thing right now we don't have the database tables and we connected to the database we have the models but we didn't run the migrations we didn't populate these user table and the post table in the database so how we should do it i mean we need to somehow either create a migrations and generate it or we need to synchronize our uh, synchronize our entities with the database so database automatically creates those tables and then we can just do a read write operations on that so here i have enabled i mean i put the synchronized true but that didn't work so then i added auto load modules true auto load models true so what it does is I think it is uh, creating these tables in the database I can see all the create syntax create table if not exist post create table if not exist user create unique index and all and now I can start uh, hitting these APIs and the APIs are API v1 auth login API v1 auth sign up API v1 post all these different APIs so here you can see auto load entities and we have created all these tables and I can see that in the database also I can see the post table and I can see the user table and there is some relationship between both these tables and there is a unique key constraint on the email and now I can start doing a sign up and all so let's say hello name everything is hello here and it has created this user I can do a so simple login also auth login I think I just need email and the password that's ok 
okay unauthorized uh, is it expecting me something else then i need to check the the data now users were email equal to this so we will just check the user login api i mean everything is now works you don't need to worry about anything it's all about uh, the code how the authentication is really working so here this is a login request.user we are generating the token so this is auth controller.es we are using auth guard for this so we let's go to the core auth guard So wait here, what we are doing here is authcontroller.ts and this does user exist is the auth guard that is for the sign up which will tell okay user already exist. We can also check this one if I try to do the sign up uh, again you can see this is throwing from the auth guard this email already exists and I will come back to the login this is auth guard local. So here this is auth guard will come into the picture and here we are doing simple login request.user. So it's same as the local JWT strategy. I mean it's the, the logic is still the same. It is using this same auth guard and it will validate that whatever the email password you are passing that exists in the database or not. Okay. And then if it exists then it will put the user object in the request. So we can also debug this if we want. So this is our local strategy. This is validating a username and the password auth service dot validate user find one username if user is null and then it is comparing the password with the help of bcrypt bcrypt dot compare this password with that if match found then return the result so maybe something is missing here auth login maybe I will just move this thing close to this editor so this is my auth login email and the password for own unauthorized why api v1 auth login why it is saying unauthorized uh, i'm trying to okay which is the what is the api let's see auth controller it's api v1 auth login and i'm just using this local auth guard which is using this local strategy and it will see unauthorized in one particular case where we have done something wrong so console.log user is this strategy even working it's not executing anything then that's there is something wrong with the controller so here we are using auth guard auth guard local so this should be using auth guard local strategy dot ts and it should be coming here and it should be validating but uh, it's directly throwing 401 that's a little strange is it falling into the trap of this strategy then obviously we don't we are not passing authorization header so it will directly fail okay maybe so let me debug this it should be very simple problem but this is how the end-to-end -end flow works we are just using the same authentication code it's just like i need to debug something but this is how we are just working on the process right we have a user module passport module just to create uh, this jwt token and these are the local strategy and the jwt strategy this is how we are passing this local strategy which will be validating based on the username and password we are passing in the payload. So I will push the code with this fix that is just a simple fix we need to just uh, I need to check with this auth guard which I have added onto the sign in but this is how it simply works and uh, this is how you can work with the SQLize right now other than that what you can do is you can use a sqlize next typo rm prisma all these different orms are available now we are left with only mongoose 
and we are going to write uh, we, we are going to use type goose mongoose and uh, how to work with uh, nest js like mongoose and nest js here also we try to associate the relationships if you try to look into these entities you will understand uh, what kind of models we have in our application let's say if you see the post post entity dot ts file here this blog post you can see the foreign key column is a user because what we want is every post needs to have a user id so every post belongs to a user right so it's like a one to many if a single user can have a multiple post and here also inside a user entity dot ts file we have uh which is this uh relationships it's not even defined here but what we can do is post belongs to a user it's like a uh i mean it's not a two-way relationships defined here entity.ts file we are just specifying just a foreign key of the user inside a post but i mean we cannot talk each and everything inside a single video but you can do how you can have a one to one one to many many to many and all these relationships with the help of these tags belongs to belongs to many and uh, has one all these things are there in the annotations available in this uh, sqlized typescript because this module was not there back back in those days but now it's there which we can use with the typescript sqlize is not that much compatible with the typescript now it is little bit evolving you can say that's why i always use uh, type orm because it, its entities are totally in typescript it's using some external package you can see here sqlize typescript to provide these typings Okay, that's all in this video. Now in the next video, we will play around with the mongoose and uh, build end-to-end -end applications because in the last two videos, I'm just talking about the code examples. But in the next video, we will build something like end-to-end -end application with the mongoose and uh, we'll build the APIs.